Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Before you do anything else, go ahead and like, subscribe, and activate the notifications by clicking on the bell icon below. So we're continuing with Pablo Picasso. If you haven't watched my video on his blue period and rose period, make sure you watch that. Today we're doing Cubism. So Pablo Picasso along Georges Brock were the co-founders of Cubism. And Cubism started between 1908 and 1915, and there's different stages of Cubism. It kind of evolved as they got going with it. Cubism at its height, I think, is represented very well by these two images. The first one is actually Georges Brock was painted between 1911 and 1912. This one's titled Man with a Guitar. Now let's take a look at Pablo Picasso. This one is titled Ma Jolie, painted between 1911 and 1912. So the same year that Brock painted his. And this is actually just a painting inspired by a popular French song. And the words are in it. Now you can see how similar both paintings are. I mean, unless you know their work, it's hard to tell which is Picasso, which one's Brock. So they've worked very closely with this movement, and their styles evolved throughout the movement. But before they got to this emblematic Cubist stage, there were things that led them to get there. But basically, Cubism is just painting something from various angles. Let's say, if you're painting me, you're painting this side, and then my like frontal view, and then profile view, and then the right side, and then all angles and all planes in a flat surface so there's just every viewpoint possible put into one basically is what cubism is and like i said it came in various phases you know there's uh, the initial phase of it was picasso being inspired by african mask and it kept evolving he even did sculpture collage assemblage So one day Picasso goes to the museum and they take him to this like room that's it, it, where it houses a lot of like African objects, masks, sculptures, things like that. And he was very inspired by that. So he started painting this very, these very primitive images that later evolved into what is now known as Cubism. But we're going to start with this earlier Cubist paintings by Picasso and let me show you the one we're going to do. Go ahead and grab your pencils. I'm going to do a sharpie. Now we can see my lines. And what I like about cubism, there's like no really way to mess up. Everything I think kind of goes. Or anything can be justified, I should say. And this one we're doing, he actually painted this in 1907. So I always like to start with the eyes and it's going to be towards the top. Start with the little iris. And this is easy because it's just a circle around that. And then an oval around that. And then another oval around that. And then there's two smaller lines above here. And then one larger one that I guess is the eyebrow. Now you do the same thing on the other side. Circle for the iris, and then the eye, and then an oval around it, and then another oval. From this eye, you're going to bring this line all the way down, and then you're going to make the eyebrow and also bring it down. And then the mouth is like a V. There's a line that comes down here. And here there's actually lots of lines in there, but I want to paint those in. I don't want it to be so harsh with the Sharpie. And then we just do an oval around this, or a head shape of sorts. It's very primitive, so there's really no right or wrong way to do this. There's an oval, I believe, below the mouth, and then there's actually two circles inside of the mouth. I don't know if they're the teeth, or what exactly that is, but they're there. Now you make one line here for the neck, one on the other side. You're gonna come in with the swoop all the way up. But before you go up, um, bring it into the right. Then this is what I presume is the elbow, 
and then his forearm. Now you're gonna make a V here, but don't touch the head because this brings the line all the way down, almost all the way down. Come to this side from here, go up. About close to where the eye is, and then you take it in. Then right here, you make a greater than or less than symbol. And then from this edge, you're going to bring it below this line right here. You make another line here, and I guess this is his torso. Bring this down. And then you're going to make a letter V from here to here. Actually, it's more like a V, but curved. So if you have an eraser, <laughs> erase that and curve it a little bit more. Like I said, it doesn't matter because there's no... You really can't mess up. Now from here, you're going to go out. Bring it in. It's like another... There's a lot of V shapes. So it'll be there, and then you're going to connect it from here and go below this point right here all the way down well, almost all the way down and then bring it in. here I guess on this side it's what I think are leaves so make a triangle here a line here bring it down and then from this point go up and then go up from here there and then there's just a lot of like would be the natural lines on the leaf, you know? They're wide in the painting. So you can put as many or as little as you want. Now, let's go back to this point, extend it out. From here, bring this line in. Back over here, below that V. Then bring it back in. This is kind of like his legs. And bring it in. And once again, there's lines down here that appear to be like leaves. I guess it can be whatever you want them to be. Now from this line, you're going to bring one down. And actually you're going to extend these. To connect. Next from the top of the V, you're going to bring this line down. Bring another one from this V. Bring this down. Curve it back. Then connect that. You can actually make these lines however you want. It doesn't have to be accurate at all. From here you go up. And then down. And then there's other triangular shapes that come out of this. Go up. There's a line here. Line there. Here. And that's pretty much it, actually. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. I feel like I might have missed, missed a couple of lines. There's just so many lines in the original one. It's so now I'm gonna paint it to see how close I can get it to Picasso's, but kind of do my own thing as well. But like I said, the beginnings of Cubism were very primitive. It's a lot of line work, and things are very simple. It's either it's either linear or geometric. It almost seems very like structural in a sense. Then you go paint it, see what it ends up looking like. So I am done. I think I got a lot of the lines wrong to the original, but I mean, that's the cool thing about art. You can just make it your own and there's really no messing up if you find a way to make it all work together. I really love the way it comes out. I love the colors. I did use very little acrylic. I think the only spots that I used acrylic were the white outline in the eyes, a little bit of red here, and that was it. Everything else is watercolor and pastels. Now my favorite part about this, and I get a lot of joy, is taking this tape off. 
because I love how like that white line looks so crisp and clean. <laughs> that really does it for me for some reason. I'm going to do the bottom part. Ah! I love doing this part. <laughs> I think, I don't know, it gives it a more pristine look, I think, if you keep that line. And then obviously I will take this off, but if I do it right now, it's going to fall. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, that's all for today's tutorial. Make sure you watch all the other Picasso videos I've made or venture into some of the other artists that I've done. And if you're interested in this, you can DM me via Instagram or uh, email me. I will leave that all down below. So that's it for today. And until next time, adios y bye.